So you're thinking about buying a home in Seattle, Washington, but you want to know the good, the bad, the pros, the cons, and everything going on in Seattle before you make that decision. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today on this video, the pros and cons of living in the great state and city of Seattle, Washington. If you have ever wanted to live in a place that has hip coffee shops, a thriving job market, as well as having the outdoors and all the outdoor life and adventure right at your doorstep, then Seattle just might be the place for you. Uh, Seattle is often referred to as the Emerald City and it's located in the western part of Washington State, separated from eastern Washington by the Cascade Mountain Range. Um, Seattle is the largest state uh, or city in the state of Washington. It's also the largest city in the Pacific Northwest. Um, Seattle is located in King County, Washington, and there is a uh, population of approximately 762,500 people with the greater Seattle metropolitan area, including our other cities and suburbs, having a population of about 4.1 million people. That's all of uh, April, as of April 2022 that those stats are from. Um, according to the Urbanist publication, Seattle has made a, a rebound with a vengeance back from the pandemic, and we've actually had in-migration of 20,100 people um, back in 2022, uh, recovering strongly from the pandemic and the coronavirus time there. So our top migration areas are actually from Florida, Texas, and California which actually happens to also be where people from Washington move to. So a little reciprocity between our states there. So welcome, welcome if you're thinking about moving to Seattle. Job growth in Seattle is has a great uh, projection. It's uh, projected to well outpace the national average with continued job growth. So if you need a job in Seattle, this is the place to be. So in this video, we are going to cover everything uh, going on in Seattle, Washington, so you can decide if it's a good fit for you. And we are going to dive in and jump into that right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything that's going on in the Seattle, Washington area and about living in Seattle, make sure you subscribe below, hit that notification bell so you can be the first to learn about the current market and fun stuff going on here in Seattle. My name is Julie Clark and I get texts and emails and phone calls every day from people like you that are looking and wanting to learn more about the Seattle area. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, give me a call, shoot me a text, uh, you know, or send me an email and I would be happy to help you make a smooth transition to the Seattle area and share all my outdoor uh, adventure list with you as well because that's what we love here in the Pacific Northwest in the Seattle area. So all right, let's jump into it. First thing what we're gonna do is cover in this video today is gonna, it's gonna be a well-rounded overview uh, of the Seattle area. Uh, we're gonna cover things like economy and the jobs in Seattle, the schools in Seattle, the spectacular view neighborhoods in Seattle, the shopping in Seattle, of course my favorite, the outdoor life in Seattle and the surrounding areas, and we're gonna wrap it up with the pros and cons of living in Seattle. So let's jump straight to it on the economy and jobs in Seattle. Let's see, Seattle is among the fastest growing cities in the country with one of the busiest ports in the nation and headquarters for many well-known corporations that I think you're gonna recognize the name of. Of course, one of the largest and the largest in the state of Washington, of course, is Amazon, which has its headquarters in Seattle. The company has uh, nearly 1 million employees globally, uh, with 80,000 of those employees approximately in the Seattle area, right in Seattle's downtown headquarters. Um, in addition to Amazon, Starbucks, uh, the coffee, if you love coffee, Starbucks has their headquarters here right in the Soto district of Seattle. Um, Starbucks, of course, has more than 380,000 employees nationwide um, or globally, and um, we are happy to have Seattle right down the street from us here in Seattle. Third department store chain Nordstrom has is headquartered here in Seattle. National retail clothing chain um, is located in downtown Seattle. They have 74,000 employees approximately nationwide, um, and we are happy to call uh, Seattle home for them. 
one of the most exciting and one of the largest schools in the nation. The University of Washington has over 50,000 students um, at undergraduate and graduate levels. Is obviously home here right on the edge of Lake Washington in the Seattle area. Um, smack in Seattle, um, they have more than 5,800 um, uh, staff on the academic staff and another 16,000 on the admin staff. So if you're looking to work at a university, we've got the University of Washington, one of the top uh, colleges in the country right here for you. So to recap, major companies with offices in the Seattle area are Amazon, Starbucks, the University of Washington, Nordstrom. We also have the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, Expeditors International, just to name a few. Uh, most people who move to the Seattle area and work for these companies want to live about 30 minutes or within 30 minutes of downtown Seattle to be able to, if they, in the case, they have to go back to the office to commute downtown. Uh, that's what most people are looking for. So later in this video, we are going to cover some of those neighborhoods so you can get used to hearing the names of those neighborhoods where you can easily get uh, down to the office downtown Seattle uh, working at one of these companies if that is where you land. So lastly, um, this larger Seattle metropolitan area is also headquarters for other globally recognized Fortune 500 companies such as Boeing Commercial Airlines, uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, Costco, Warehouser, REI, and Alaska Airlines. So again, if you need a job in Seattle, we got them. All right, moving on to the economy in Seattle. Now, Seattle has a very vibrant tech scene, if you didn't already know that. Uh, in 2022, Seattle was ranked ninth uh, in global startup rankings, and our region is also ranked second in North America in terms of what they call ecosystem knowledge when it comes to startups. So if you want to work for a startup or you're thinking about starting one, um, we are a welcoming, great environment for that. Um, the rankings list artificial intelligence, big data, and analytics as the key Seattle strengths, attributing that partially to the University of Washington as being a leader in the field of machine learning and big data. We have some great um, publications in the Seattle area if you're looking to get in the startup scene or look for jobs in the startup scene, and those would be geekwire.com or builtinseattle.com are great publications to follow if you wanna get more plugged in um, to the tech scene in, uh, scene in Seattle. So Seattle hits the um, hot button for startups as far as top-notch top -notch talent, thriving accelerators and incubators, uh, growing VC interest and angel investors. And according to the Allen Institute uh, for AI, uh, report Seattle's poised to continue its impressive growth and trajectory as a place for starting and building the next big businesses in tech. So come join us here in Seattle if that sounds like you. Now, while Seattle is an excellent place for technology, it also has some other key industries that have helped us be one of the fastest growing economies and solid economies in the United States. And that includes clean the clean tech industry, uh, the manufacturing, maritime and logistics industry, health and life sciences, and information technology. Um, so let's jump into that for a minute. Um, according to choosewashington.org, a great publication to follow if you're interested in the economy in Seattle, is that Puget Sound is ranked fifth for uh, in the U.S. for life sciences, the life sciences sector strength, uh, based on market maturity, momentum, innovation, and growth potential. Uh, a little industry snapshot off of choosewashington.org is that there are nearly 40,000 researchers and support staff working at over 1,150 biotech firms, nonprofits, medical device manufacturers, digital health companies, and pharmaceutical companies in the state of Washington. There's 170 global health organizations, including the uh, Gates Foundation, which has committed more than $40 billion to support global health initiatives. Um, leading research institutes in Seattle include the University of Washington, the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center, the Allen Institute, and the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. This has 
spurred the growth of our development in Seattle, including 9.9 .9 million square feet of existing lab space with another almost $1 million of square foot under construction. Another $5.2 million of lab research and office space is proposed for development in Seattle. So major growth, uh, great industries to provide long-term stability to the Seattle economy and job market. Um, and so if you need to, if you'd like to work hard and have a quick and easy access to take a break for your mental health and for your general health and mindfulness, um, having the outdoors right at your doorstep in Seattle when you're ready to take a break from all that hard work, again, Seattle might just be the right place for you. All right, that covers the economy and jobs in Seattle. Now we're gonna jump into a very important topic that I know a lot of people are interested in, and that is the Seattle schools. Uh, we, have L we have 85 elementary schools in Seattle, uh, 34 middle schools, and 37 high schools. I'm talking about public schools. We have another almost 100 private schools in the Seattle area um, that are spread out through the city that are in some of the same neighborhoods that I'm gonna, and urban villages I'm gonna mention today. So whether you're into public school or private school, um, plenty to choose from. What I'm gonna break down here today is the local schools down by location that are north or northwest, northeast and south of downtown Seattle. So you can start to get an idea of some of the urban village neighborhood names. I'm gonna cover mainly the public schools today. You can go find more information about all the schools, both public and private by checking out uh, greatschools.org or schooldigger.org um, to dive into what more of what the rankings mean and what might be a great fit for you and your family as you move to Seattle. Um, what we're going to cover today, again, like I said, is the public school system because they don't rank the private schools uh, on greatschools.org or Seattle Digger. Um, if you want to know more about private schools, feel free to reach out to me um, and I'll share all the information I know and talk about those locations and some of the timelines that you need to know about if you're interested in the private school system in the Seattle area. So let's jump into it. We're going to first talk about elementary schools in Seattle. And again, I'm going to cover it by location um, as compared to downtown Seattle. So first off, we're going to talk about north of downtown Seattle. We have the Greenwood Elementary School in the Greenwood neighborhood. We've got the Cascadia Elementary School in the Greenwood neighborhood as well. I'm just going to touch on the most highly rated schools in each one of these neighborhood areas, north, south, uh, northeast and northwest of downtown Seattle where the best schools lie. Um, northwest of downtown Seattle we have Co Elementary which is in the Magnolia neighborhood, the Adams Elementary School which is in the downtown, closer to downtown Ballard, um, zip code 98107 neighborhood area. We have Whittier Elementary, which is also in the Ballard neighborhood in the 98117 zip code area. And Lawton Elementary, which is over in the Magnolia neighborhood. I think that might be the 98199 zip code area. All great schools. Elementary schools is all we're talking about here. Northeast of downtown Seattle, um, we have the John Stanford uh, International School, which is in, located in the fabulous uh, neighborhood of the Wallingford area. We have the Wedgwood Elementary School in the Wedgwood area, View Ridge Elementary School in the View Ridge neighborhood. Hey, they're not geniuses at making the names up, right? Pretty easy stuff to remember. If you're looking in a specific neighborhood for an elementary school, just type in the name of the neighborhood. You'll probably run right into it. We have the McDonald Elementary School in the Wallingford neighborhood as well. You're, you can hear that there's some overlay between you know, great neighborhoods and great schools as you're getting to learn more about the urban villages and hottest neighborhoods here in Seattle. So south of downtown Seattle, Rainier Prep is the place to be in the Boulevard Park neighborhood area. All right, now we're gonna be moving on to the top middle schools. Uh, north of downtown Seattle, we have the Salmon Bay Middle School that is located in the Ballard neighborhood. That is the, I believe, the 98117 or 98107 zip code. Northwest of downtown Seattle, um, closer to the Puget Sound over here where I'm at today, is McClure Middle School in the Magnolia neighborhood area. Uh, the Catherine Blaine Middle School in the Magnolia neighborhood area and the Whitman Middle School, which is in the Broadview neighborhood, which is just 
north of the Ballard neighborhood. Northeast of downtown Seattle, uh, we're crossing over the other side of Interstate 5, our main highway that runs north-south through the Seattle area head. We, all those neighborhoods like Ballard and Magnolia and Mag, uh, uh, are on, Wallingford are on the west side of our I-5 corridor. Uh, the northeast side of downtown is on the east side of our main highway. Uh, that's I-5. Um, and that middle school over there on the northeast side of downtown is called Eckstein Middle School, which is bordering the Wedgwood and the Ravenna neighborhoods. Um, south of downtown for middle school, again, Rainier Prep, which is goes up through eighth grade in the Boulevard Park neighborhood. And also a hot neighborhood if you're commuting, if you want to commute to um, Bellevue or south of Seattle would be the Beacon Hill neighborhood. Uh, which is Mercer Middle School over there in Beacon Hill. That'd be North Beacon Hill. Let's move on to the high schools. Some of the top high schools, public high schools we're talking about in the Seattle area. North of downtown, just because that's the way I'm going, would be the Ingram High School. Is rated a 7 out of 10 uh, by greatschools.org. Um, they also have that International Baccalaureate Program at Ingram High School. Um, which is located north of downtown Seattle. Northwest of downtown Seattle, um, actually in the neighborhood that I live in nearby, is called Ballard. Ballard High School has the highest, uh, as of uh, January 2023 here, has the highest public school rating um, on greatschools.org. Um, northeast of downtown Seattle, over there on the other side of I-5, on the east side of I-5, headed towards, moving towards the Cascade Mountains over there, is Roosevelt High School, which is rated 8 out of 10. Uh, south of downtown high school, we've got Garfield High School, uh, rated 7 out of 10. Don't read too much into the ratings. Go over to School Digger or GreatSchools.org and learn about, uh, you know, dive deep on what those ratings mean for you and your family and what's the best fit for you. So now I'm going to recap back with some of the neighborhoods we mentioned that are kind of have the trifecta of the top elementary, uh, middle school and high schools combined. And that would be the Greenwood neighborhood. That would be the Ballard neighborhood, the Magnolia neighborhood. Now, all those are on the west side of Interstate 5. Um, moving over to the east side, that would be the Wedgwood neighborhood, the Ravenna neighborhood, and the View Ridge neighborhood. All fantastic places. Um, just probably depends on which neighborhood you feel the right vibe in, uh, want access to either shopping, which we're going to cover later down in the video, or uh, freeway access or schools. That's all up to you. Uh, look, I know each one of those neighborhoods in depth. And again, happy to talk to you uh, about steering you in the right direction sooner rather than later uh, once I hear your story and what interests you. So again, now, one of the things about living in the Seattle area is almost, it is hard to not live in a neighborhood that has the potential and some pockets of fabulous views of the Olympic Mountains, of Puget Sound, of the Cascade Mountains, of downtown Seattle skyline. We've got it all here. And that is one of my favorite things about living in the Seattle area is just the abundance and, uh, you know, fabulous views you get, you can get at all different different price points. Of course, the more you spend, the more unobstructive, uh, straight on views that you're going to get. But we certainly have tons and tons of even townhomes in some of these neighborhoods that have fabulous, you know, rooftop decks um, that you can jump in when you are, you know, just getting started out and scale your way uh, into more of the residential neighborhoods and the bigger homes as you get further along in your career and start saving your money because you're going to need it. You're going to need to save your money to live in Seattle. So let me just tell you some of the top neighborhood views and we'll show you a map here also of where those are located. So some of my favorite, um, Blue Ridge, the Blue Ridge neighborhood and the North Beach neighborhood uh, are right here on the bluff of Puget Sound and northwest side of Seattle. The Sunset Hill neighborhood, again, right on the bluffs of Puget Sound with spectacular views of the Olympic Mountains and the Puget Sound, panoramic views, man, it can't be beat. Finney Ridge, that is a little bit further east of the Ballard and North Beach and Blue Ridge areas, kind of on a bluff. So you get a little bit further distance out, but you also get the fabulous territorial views coming across Ballard. Um, 
and you can still see the beautiful uh, Olympic Mountains uh, right there from Finney Ridge. Magnolia is another neighborhood. A little further deeper in uh, off the freeways is Magnolia neighborhood. Fabulous schools, fabulous urban village uh, with parks and again, great schools. We have now moving over to East Queen Anne. The Queen Anne neighborhood, particularly on the east side of Queen Anne is gonna have spectacular views of uh, downtown Seattle, maybe even some views of Lake Union, um, which we can flash up a picture of Lake Union for you, which is a highly uh, great place for boating and paddle boarding um, during our summer or even any time during the year. We've got over again on the east side of um, I-5, our interstate freeway, we've got the Madrona neighborhoods for great views. The View Ridge neighborhood, which actually is sort of the sister of the North Beach and Blue Ridge neighborhood on the east side is the View Ridge neighborhood that looks at the Cascade Mountain Range. Absolutely gorgeous over there. We have the Leshy neighborhood with spectacular views of Lake Washington. We have the Mount Baker neighborhood that is south of Seattle, um, right on the edge of Lake Washington looking east. Just absolutely beautiful. You head down further and over to the spectacular little island of West Seattle. Uh, you have to cross over the West Seattle Bridge to get there. Uh, but West Seattle is a little bit more affordable than living in some of these Ballard or Magnolia or you know Sunset Hill neighborhoods. You can get absolutely gorgeous views over there for a little bit pricier because it can be sometimes a pain in the butt to co commute off of West Seattle, but people love it over there. It's easy access to downtown. Um, and we've just, they just rebuilt, re-engineered, I guess I'll say the West Seattle Bridge. Uh, and people are loving to go over there right on Alki Beach. They have their own beach over there right on the water. It's absolutely gorgeous. So price ranges in these neighborhoods. Let's talk about that for a minute. The price ranges in these neighborhoods that we mentioned, there's going to be 850,000 to about 1.1 million or more for a brand new construction town home for a town home. That means that, you know, you're on a smaller lot, um, you know, we're talking 1,500 square feet up to maybe, you know, 2,000 square feet or so of a town home uh, where you're not having your own big backyard, but you're getting brand new construction with rooftop decks, all new finishes, absolutely gorgeous stuff. Uh, or you can spend another price point as a million to let's say 1.4 million. And that's going to get you in a nice quality home in these neighborhoods with various levels of updates. And obviously the lower price point is for a smaller home or less finished homes with some sweat equity maybe done enough for move in ready and you're going to love it with some room to grow. Um, 1.4 getting a little bit larger or a middle bit nicer finishes is what it'll cost you to get into, you know, a traditional home in these neighborhoods we call like the resale home, not new construction, just a good solid bones construction neighborhood with a backyard and um, some neighbors in a good urban village neighborhood. Now, if you want to jump into a new construction home in these neighborhoods, that's going to cost you anywhere between two and three million dollars um, is a price point that you're going to get used to here in the Seattle area for uh, awesome luxury finishes, new construction home, and some of the best neighborhoods. It's even more expensive to get the combination of the kick butt views. The unobstructed views and the new construction might even get you closer to 3.5 million. I know one just sold down the street for me, new construction, about 3,500 square feet with total views. Um, but that's what you can expect on price points in these neighborhoods. Are there prices below and above and everywhere in between? Of course. I'm just kind of giving you the sweet spot today on what you can think about uh, when you're talking about budgeting. Um, all right, we're going to move on to development. What's going on in Seattle and as far as development goes, that's a great sign of local economy. And um, I'll tell you that the Seattle area is densely populated and we have a housing shortage. As a result, the city of Seattle is focusing more and more on allowing more dense development in the residential neighborhoods, including the ability for homeowners and property owners to build what we call an ADU, an ADU on their existing lot. What's an ADU, Julie? You might be thinking, well, an ADU is an accessory dwelling unit that is a small secondary living unit that is allowed on residential areas. Um, a detached dwelling unit 
we call a dadu, a D-A-D-U, or a backyard cottage. Um, and that is detached, a uh, separate structure from the main house here in Seattle. Uh, you're allowed to build up to a thousand square feet in that regard if your property falls within the right size lot. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can find out and research that as we get going here. Um, also growing in Seattle, popularity is what we call an AADU, which is, an, is attached to actually the main house, might often be called or referred to as a mother-in-law unit. Um, and the city of Seattle a uh, little secret tip here has a fabulous website called aduuniverse.com. And all you have to do is go and plug in an address there and it will immediately pop out the information on what you on that property are allowed to build in regards to a DADU or an AADU. It's fabulous. It's a secret weapon. And now I've let the cat out of the bag. I use it with a lot of my clients to help them, you know, plan for the future. You might not be ready for that now, but why not layer on future potential for the property that you're buying where you can add on that. It's actually a, you know, an income stream that you can add to your property to help you pay for whatever you need in your life and your property taxes and so forth. Um, so Seattle's also in the process of a major waterfront development in downtown Seattle's uh, downtown area that's going to be a 20 acre park that's going to include six playgrounds for the kids, a two way bike path, large scale art exhibition and installation, garden spaces filled with thousands of planets, uh, pedestrian, pedestrian access. Uh, beach access, event spaces, you name it. Elevated walkway that's going to uh, connect the downtown waterfront back to the famous Pike Place Market, which I know uh, you should go visit while you're in town, if you're in town. Um, and we look forward, of course, to that addition to our city that's not only going to be for the residents, but for anybody visiting as well. It's absolutely beautiful um, in downtown Seattle. The views are spectacular. Um, you know, we have a big Ferris wheel you can jump on and relax and take, uh, take it all in. Next up, a topic that I know a lot of you are interested in is the shopping in Seattle. Let's move on to shopping. Um, University Village is the gem of Seattle's outdoor uh, shopping mall scene. It has more than 125 shops, restaurants, and cafes. It's located just 10 minutes from downtown Seattle on the east side of the Interstate I-5 freeway. Super easy. It only takes uh, literally like 20 minutes from to get from Ballard. This is on the west side on the bluffs of Puget Sound. You know, 20 minutes just to drive across. They don't even need to get on a freeway to get over to the University Village, which myself and my family, we go to all the time. Uh, in fact, a gang of eighth graders, I think just left my house, uh, heading over there to go hang out. Such a beautiful place, beautifully landscaped, um, just a great place to grab a coffee and, and relax in the sunshine, people watch and get your shopping on and grab some lunch or some dinner. Um, lots of seating, great place. Next up is Bellevue Square Mall, which is our largest indoor shopping mall with over 200 shops, restaurants, cafes. It's again, just 20 or 30 minutes uh, drive east of downtown Seattle across Lake Washington. Easy access, lots of parking, um, all the shops that you could, you, you know, that you're looking for, you can find as well as restaurants uh, in downtown Bellevue there at Bellevue Square Mall. North of Seattle, we have the Alderwood Mall, which is about a 30 minute drive north of Seattle in the city of Linwood. Uh, what do we have over there? We have Alderwood Mall has about 160 shops. It's a mix of an outdoor and indoor, indoor mall, uh, restaurant shops, cafes, uh, all the name brands that you're looking for. Uh, just if you're wanting another choice and another flavor, head up to Alderwood Mall of Seattle. Easiest access is probably to Westfield South Center Mall. Uh, again, just located. Everything in Seattle is about 20 or 30 minutes away. Then you get in terrible traffic, which you'll find is one of the cons of living in Seattle, and it could take you maybe 45 minutes or an hour uh, in terrible traffic to get where you're going. Not so bad, um, not so bad, but that's what the shopping's all about in Seattle. Uh, of course, lots of retail, strip centers all around, uh, easy access, everything you need right at your fingertips. The best places to live are in the urban villages where you almost don't even need to live uh, or even move. If you got work from home, uh, some of these urban villages like Ballard and Wallingford and Wedgwood uh, are great places where you're going to have everything right outside your doorstep. 
All right, now, lastly, we're gonna move on here to my favorite topic, which is the outdoor life in Seattle. In Seattle, you are never too far from nature. There's over 485 parks within the city limits, offering everything from beach park or beachfront walking paths to forest to exploring stunning gardens. There's world-class hiking, skiing, snowboarding, boating, um, all that stuff right outside your doorstep. You can literally be skiing, snowboarding where there is the day or we even have night skiing here in, in just 45 minutes for, from Seattle, from some of our bigger mountains. It's only going to take an hour to two hours to get there. Um, and you know, you're less, you're surrounded 30 minutes, any direction you go from our local lakes, the Puget Sound for boating, paddle boarding, jet skiing, swimming, fishing, uh, any direction you go in the Seattle. Absolutely, absolutely love it. If you are an outdoors lover, if you're not, it's like osmosis. You're going to be by the time you start hanging out in Seattle. Um, so the best way to describe Seattle is probably, uh, I'm going to read from an article here uh, that I've posted in the description down below. So I'm just going to read it here. Suppose for a moment that you want to have a life full of adventure because it describes, describes it so perfectly here in Seattle. So you want to have a life full of adventure for your health and your mindfulness. And after working those long hours at the tech firms or in the health and life sciences field, and you're ready to take up activities like hiking and biking and backpacking and paddle boarding, skiing and snowboarding. We have it all here. And you want to access all those things um, and do it all without having to travel more than an hour or two by car from your house. Um, and you want access to good food and beer and, and wine. We have tons of wineries in Eastern Washington and have a great vibrant community of like-minded people. Well, there's only one state for that, and that is the great state of Washington here. Um, for years and years, I think Washingtonians have been pulling the wool over people's eyes, you know, trying to tell us how gloomy and, and gray it is here all year long, such a rainy place. But in the truth, um, the summers in Washington are practically perfect. Um, so now the cat's out of the bag. Uh, we get the greenery and the beauty because we have some of the more rainy days. Um, in fact, you know, I'm going to talk about the weather here in a minute, but um, if you love the outdoors or you want to involve that more in your life, probably the best thing about the state of Washington, honestly, is having that right at your doorstep. Finally, last things last here, it's time to cover uh, the reality of our local real estate market here, the good, the bad of Seattle. So listen, the national news stats don't um, allow you to understand actually what's going on. Real estate, real estate is hyper-local. Not all markets are created equal. Um, Seattle's top economist, Matthew Gardner, is forecasting the prices, the Seattle home prices in Seattle are gonna stabilize here by the end of 2023. It's January 2023 right now. Uh, we're, that we're expecting, um, he is, he's the economist, and he's expecting interest rates to drop, you know, by the end of 2023. So we're not having a housing bubble here in Seattle, um, but we are going to see some year-over-year -year decline in prices uh, because June of 2022 was actually the peak of our market here. Um, but there's no reason we're going to see some sort of systematic decline in pricing. Um, but we are going to see a modest decline in home values in 2020 three mainly due to affordability issues the combination of our high acceleration in prices and price growth all these years combined with higher interest rates are going to force seattle homeowners to lower their price because of the affordability issue here um again you know we're just having a temporary dip in home prices while interest rates are up higher or till will people accept where interest rates are going to land. Um, so it's a great time to grab a property in Seattle while the competition is down. Uh, honestly, in the past, it's been more like an auction to buy properties in Seattle with competitive bidding. You're not able to, you know, you just have to go in and you don't get any favorable terms, uh, having to waive your inspections. And right now, for the foreseeable future, at least here in 2023, is a great time where you can jump in, take your time a little bit more, um, negotiate a little bit more, get your inspections done after you're under contract as well is have some of these homeowners and sellers who are forced to face the reality um, help pay down your interest rate. We have strategies for that um, that we can help you here, that I can help you with here as you're getting ready to move to Seattle. But long story short, affordability is going to be the tail that wags the dog in Seattle in 2023. 
Um, but if you can afford to buy a home in Seattle, especially if you're coming out of California where you've you know had much experience higher home prices, 20, uh, Seattle is a great place to buy a home in 2023. You should absolutely go for it uh, and benefit from that less competition and more favorable offer terms. You know, we can talk about how to make sure that you're insulated, you know, short term, uh, you know, maybe it's not a great idea, but if you're looking to stay here for five years or longer, heck yeah, you know, our appreciation is going to be solid going forward, not to worry about future home price. We're going to resume our long term appreciation in the Seattle area um, probably sooner rather than later is usually how it works here in Seattle. So, and the result here, we're going to just cap it off with the pros and cons uh, to summarize everything living here in Seattle. We'll start with the cons, get that out of the way. Biggest one is the weather. I'm sure you've wondered and heard about, yeah, I heard the weather's not so great in Seattle. Does it actually rain a lot in Seattle? You know, um, the answer is yes, but it doesn't rain. Um, it rains days, but it doesn't actually rain that as much on those days. It actually rains harder in places like Florida than it does in Seattle. So we don't get the torrential rains as much. We might get, you know, days that touch upon it because it's measured by 0 0.01 inch of, uh, what do you call it, precipitation. So we have, you know, um, what do I want to say, maybe 150 rainy days per year. Um, but the amount of rain is not always significant in the Seattle area. Um, Texas and Florida have much more rain than Seattle does as far as it goes on the amount of rain. Um, we do have gray days all winter long in most places, um, you know, and that contributes to our lack of sunny days here in Seattle. Um, you know, but there is a joke in the Seattle area that, you know, the rainy gloomy days in Seattle are actually created by Washingtonians to scare the rest of you off from coming here and overrunning our beautiful state uh, but I can tell you in January 2023 right now, the temperature range has actually been like 35 degrees to 50 degrees just in January of 2023 here. So go figure, right? Global warming. Um, our hot days in Seattle run from mid-July to all the way uh, to the end of September. So we have fabulous summers with mild temperatures. We don't often get too many days above 90 degrees here. Uh, just in between maybe 75, we definitely can get into the 80s um, in the Seattle area, but um, tends to be pretty mild um, and enjoyable. The cat's out of the bag once again. That is, though, I guess I'd say if I had to pick a con, the weather, uh, you know, if you are somebody that needs a lot of sunshine, you're probably going to want to take that vacation to Hawaii, which is just like a five and a half hour flight away here from Seattle and uh, get that in there um, at your mid renter break in, in February. Um, another con of living in Seattle is, is um, sales tax. We have a 10.1 sales tax here in the Seattle area. Um, in the state of Washington, and you know, you're going to have to get used to that. We have some other benefits, as we'll talk about in the pro, uh, pros, that offset that, but that's what we have here in Seattle. You could jump down if you want to do a big spending trip, you can jump down in three hours, three and a half hours, and be down in Portland, Oregon, which has no sales tax. Do all your school shopping down there or buy some big purchases down there and come back up here to Seattle. Um, last con I'll say is our home price affordability. Yep, it's expensive to live here in Seattle. See if it comes back down as our prices drop, but yeah, you gotta make a pretty uh, nice hefty income to be able to afford a home in Seattle. So uh, pros of living in Seattle, of course, we covered in depth our strong economy and job growth, our savvy startup scene, our tech scene in this video earlier. Um, we have no state income tax. That's why the Californians love us. We have no state income tax. People move here for that reason, for just the combination of all the good things that we've been talking about in this video today. Um, and of course, my favorite pro of living in the state of Washington and the Seattle area is the fabulous views, the outdoor life. You're surrounded by mountains and water uh, everywhere you turn so you can pursue any type of mountain or water sport that interests you. Um, keep your health up, keep you young and vibrant out here in Seattle. And then, hey, go hit one of our, you know, popping up all our great breweries and wineries and distilleries um, and, and enjoy what Seattle's all about. So on top of that, you're gonna have long-term continued 
appreciation of the housing market. Uh, so Seattle is a safe place to invest your money in buying a home. And um, so that's it today, guys, for the overview. And uh, now you have the good, the bad, and the pros and the cons of living in Seattle, Washington. Um, you know, hey, it's always nice to have a friend uh, when you're moving to a new area that can share information and welcome you to town. And I'd love to be that person for you. So if you're looking to move to the Seattle area or if you already live in Seattle and you're looking to move, whether that's in 90 days or 90 days, you know, um, shoot me a text, uh, shoot me an email, call me, text me. All my contact information is below. It's Julie Clark with eXp Realty. Um, not only will I share all my tips for buying and selling homes and getting you into the right neighborhoods that are the right match for you, I wanna hear your story, your wants and your needs. I'll also share with you all my secret, the best hikes, my family, we chase uh, not only hikes in the summer, but we love to find all the secret swimming holes here in Washington. And I'm happy to share all that with you. Let's get to know each other. Um, and that's it. That's all I got for you today. Again, um, hit the notification bell, subscribe so you can hear more about the different neighborhoods and school districts and urban villages of Seattle. We'll do a deep dive as we go, including the Bellevue area, Redmond area, um, and some of the other great neighborhoods in and around the Seattle area. All right, I'll catch you on the next one.